Hey guys, Evan Rand here. I want to do a quick video for you on the Recover 2020. I just got this yesterday, took it out to the range, ran a bunch of drills with it, really liked it, and said, okay, this is going to be worthy of doing a video on. Um, I want to do this quickly because I've got several videos that are going to be far more detailed. Uh, this is just going to be a, a real short one to give you guys the highlights. Um, first and foremost, when you're working with this, and you, you start to, you know, once you get your Glock in, you start to work with it, you start to go, this really is solving problems. When you're using it, you have to make sure, there are three things you, you have to make sure you pay attention to. You have to make sure the accessory rail at the front of the Glock is properly centered. You have to make sure that the, um, that the Glock is seated at the rear. If you don't do this properly, oh, you also you have to make sure that the trigger guard is properly aligned to this notch here. If you don't do all three, you'll end up with it slightly canted up and your slide catch will end up a little high and you'll wonder what the heck is going on It's because you didn't have it seated properly. Once you get it done, it's one screw. Use anti-seize compound, Permatex anti-seize lubricant. Trust me guys, do not use Loctite on this. On the side rails or on the main screw, please don't use Loctite. Um, once you have it all cinched up, um, I'm running a WML on it and it's brilliant, no pun intended. The WML is inverted, so this is the bottom of the WML. This portion of my index finger right here pinches into the WML and it activates the light. Uh, this is nothing but just a, a navigational thing. Um, having, worked, having worked third shift for years as a cop, I fully appreciate red lights if you have to move around in darkness. So yeah, this is definitely, uh, this is that little cheap mission first tactical thing. And guys, I've been using it for years and it works perfectly. Um, this is a nice setup. All the controls are easily accessible. Um, you'll notice that I wrecked by the RMR. I mean, it, it's simple. This, this setup works. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, I made a sling for it. And the reason for that is, if you're choosing to use this as a PDW only without the holster, let's say it's the middle of the night and you grab the thing. Well, you're going to have to immobilize this thing to go hands-on with whatever, either an injury or take control of somebody or something. So you're going to have to find a way to release this. Well, that's why the sling is a good idea. This is six millimeter shock cord with a couple of hog rings and shrink tubing on it. I literally took me five minutes to make this. And you'll notice that when this is in the holster, it is a little bit on the tight side. The sling's a little on the tight side. The reason for that is when it's out and it's being used, should I have to release it, I hook around the front and I let it go and it sticks to my chest. Here, the chance of it getting its trigger pull or slim to none, here, it's even less. If I throw it in the back, I'm not getting a trigger pull and all I have to do to get to it is bring it around, re remove this from the front and I'm ready to use the thing. Guys, this is such a simple setup that you start talking about it and you and you run out of things to cover because it is that simple and that intuitive to use. The designer of this is a man named Tamir Porat. Tamir is the designer, according to the paperwork that this came with, Tamir is the designer of the Israeli Tavor. The Tavor is the, uh, the, uh, the IDF service rifle. And as soon as I read that, I went, oh, that explains why I like this so much because this is a very well thought out product. In all my years of working with um, Glock adapters, both domestic U.S. and Israeli, this is by far the best one I've ever used. And here's why. If I, if I were to give you one reason, here's why. Because Tamir figured out that leaving the RMR exposed on the slide retains the accuracy of the handgun. Remember, this is still a handgun. By retaining the RMR on the slide, access to the RMR on the slide, you retain the accuracy of the RMR to the slide. Everybody else has an adapter that holds the Glock on the frame portion and then the optic is, is required to be put on top. First of all, you then end up with a sight over bore mechanical offset issue and you also end up with a zero shifting issue from the Glock being held and the adapter being held and the two end up getting separated from one another and the alignment ends up off. And I'm telling this from experience, you're not going to miss a little bit, you're going to miss a lot. And you're going to miss a lot from 15 yards, 20 yards. and this retains the accuracy because it's right on the, on the Glock itself. This is a brilliant setup because now you can be running your handgun 
really set, you go to a PDW, and you'll notice I'm a lefty, and all I do is reach over, grab it, and pass it over. It's not that big a deal. And, oh, and the reason that I run a sling is, should the weapon go down for any reason, I can release it and go to my handgun. Um, so as a lefty, I wear it here, so I would holster, and then grab it, place it to the shoulder, and gain control of the weapon. And yes, this is a brace, not a stock. Um, but it has already been legally settled that braces can come in contact with the shoulder, so... Um, brilliant device at recovertactical.com. Check them out. If you guys have any questions, leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them. Have a good one.